There were many dangers to be encountered on the western frontier of early America, not the least of them, childbirth. Doctors were few and far between, and an experienced midwife within hailing distance was to be cherished. Nancy had been suffering the pains of labor for several hours without making any progress. They knew something terrible was wrong, but all they could do was send for the doctor and pray. He's gone. The doctor is gone. He, there's a bad accident under Lexington. He won't be back for two, maybe three days. And what about the midwife, Jeb? Did you find her? No, sir. She's back east visiting some relatives. What are we gonna do now, sir? There's just no one around to help. You've done all you could. You go on home. I'll take care of things. baby, no matter what happens to me. You are not going to die. Yes? Hello, my name is Sarah, Sarah Parsons. I'm a midwife. It looks as though I've arrived just in time. Yes. The child was turned in the womb. Delivery would be difficult, but Sarah assured Thomas and Nancy that everything would be all right. The labor was intense, lasting most of the night, but the hard work of the mother and the midwife paid off handsomely with the birth of a healthy son. Sarah, please, let us pay you for your services. Oh, I have no need of money. But there is something you can do for me. What can I do? Make sure the child is named Abraham. Abraham? Thomas, go help her with her bag. You're, you're right, I will. But in the few seconds it took Thomas to reach the road, Sarah Parsons had disappeared without a trace. Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States and the man who signed the Emancipation Proclamation, ending slavery in America, was brought safely into this world on the miraculous wings of prayer. And it's significant to note that throughout the remainder of his life, this great leader of men often went to his knees in humility and prayer. In 1860, Lincoln was chosen as the Republican presidential candidate and became the 16th president of the United States. With his election, South Carolina seceded from the Union, and America was thrust into a great civil war. In the early days of the war, the South seemed unstoppable. President Lincoln sought God's guidance in understanding why the South was so successful. He concluded that the entire nation was guilty of the sins of pride and slavery, on September 22, 1862, under his Emergency War Powers Authority, Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed all slaves as of 1863. Then he called for a National Day of Humility, fasting, and prayer to be observed throughout the North on April 30, 1863. In a letter to a friend, Lincoln explained why he took these actions. On many a defeated field, there was a voice louder than the thundering of a cannon. It was the voice of God crying, let my people go. We were all very slow in realizing it was the voice of God. But after many humiliating defeats, the nation came to believe it 
as a great and solemn command. Great multitudes prayed that I might answer God's voice by signing the Emancipation Proclamation. And I did, believing we never should be successful in the great struggle unless the God of battles has been on our side. On the horizon, one of the pivotal battles of the Civil War was shaping up. The outcome of this engagement might well determine the outcome of the war. The price that would have to be paid was beyond all imagination. In July of 1863, 163,000 soldiers came together on a battlefield that would forever be known simply as Gettysburg. Lincoln left us a record of his appeal to God just prior to this critical encounter. I went to my room one day and I locked the door and I got down on my knees before Almighty God and prayed to him mightily for victory at Gettysburg. And I then and there made a solemn vow to Almighty God that if he would stand by our boys at Gettysburg, I would stand by him 